Good evening and welcome to Oklahoma Baptist University and the Bison Sports Network where the Oklahoma City Chiefs are in town, ranked number one in the nation in NAIA basketball, 18-0. They'll be facing the Bison of Oklahoma Baptist University, ranked number eight in the nation in NAIA, and 20-2. and two. The Bison coming off a loss last Saturday night in Lubbock versus Lubbock Christian. A seek to regain some composure and, and, and win a game against a rival, Oklahoma City University. This is the first time that the Bison have played the Oklahoma City Chiefs since the semifinal rematch this night. Tonight's game is the first between the two teams since the Chiefs pulled off an 86-85 win over the Bison in an NAIA national semifinal last year. OCU leads the series 34-18 after sweeping three games last year. There has not been a series split since the 1989-90 season. Tonight, the Bison have a chance to avenge losses last year three of them, the most important one in the NAIA national uh, runner-up or semifinal game. The Bison tonight, Bob, have served several keys to success. What do you see those keys as? Well, Kerry, I think tonight that one of the most important aspects of the game is, is the concentration and the execution of, of the Bison. The Bison have to be able to execute screens and execute their plays very well for them to, for them to be able to uh, compete with the OCU defense. I, I spoke with Coach Win Case earlier in the evening, and he said the keys to success for the uh, Chiefs were to stop Eric Jones, first of all, to take the crowd out of the ball game, to play good transition defense, and to control, if not take Eric Jones out of the ball game. They're going to play man to man on the Bison, and they're going to try to take this loud crowd out of the game because it can be and it can take a toll. Well, Kerry, I, th I think he's right in saying to take Eric out of the game. Eric is definitely a very good player, and he is very hard to stop. Uh, and playing a man-to-man -man defense is also very important to this game. Uh, I think if the, like I said, the Bison execute their screens well enough, it can, it'll be able to defeat the, that man-to-man -man defense. The Chiefs, a very athletic ball club, will be starting tonight. Walsh Jordan, a shooter averaging 17 points per ball game. Ryan Adadell. Number 15, number 22, Corey Jenkins will be starting. He's a senior guard from Detroit, Michigan. Number 32, a big man, Brian DeBose, 6'4", senior forward out of Tulsa. And number 40, Brian Hopgood, 6'10", senior center from Spencer. For the Bison, number 10, Brad Thompson, senior guard from Missouri City, Texas. Number 12, Spencer Wright. Number 20, Lamont Ford. Number 25, Eric Jones. And 35, Don Newton will be starting for the Bison. You just saw Eric Jones miss a layup off the tip. OCU with the ball. That's Brian DeBose with the shot. Won't go. Eric Jones with the board. I think one of the important factors is the crowd in this game. That's going to be a foul on Jeff Boyer. Check that. That's Brian DeBose, number 32. Lamont Ford will check in at the line. Lamont Ford shooting 75.6% from the free throw stripe. Hits the first. The Bison off to a good start thus far, early in the ball game. Lamont Ford hits the second of two free throws, and the Bison are up two to nothing with 19 minutes and 30 seconds to play in the, the first half. That's Corey Jenkins with the ball, top of the key. Spencer Wright guarding him. Brian DeBose couldn't get that shot to go. Brad Thompson with the ball to Lamont Ford. That basket's good. Well, that, that free throw, that baseline jumper is one of, one of Lamont's uh, cornerstone shots. I think it's going to be important in this game tonight. That's number 15, Ryan Autodell, over to Corey Jenkins. Corey Jenkins hits that shot. That's a three-pointer for Corey Jenkins. He's a shooter, averaging over 16 points per ball game. Coach Wynn Case told us to watch out for him. Big ball game from Corey Jenkins, and the Bison are going to be in trouble. Spencer with the right one now with the ball up top of the key. Going to be a foul inside. Fouls on number 40, Brian Hopgood. 
Brian Hopkins is a pretty tough player, Bob. Yeah, I think Hopkins is definitely a very physical player. He's he always has been that way. Uh, he's he's one that is tough to guard just because of his size. Hop good known for his turnaround jumper. That's Lamont Ford again from the side. Won't go. Eric Jones tries to tip it in. That won't go either. And that's Corey Jenkins with the basketball. Corey Jenkins pushing the ball up court to the top of the key for three. Won't go. Struggle for the rebound. Number 15, Ryan Otterdale comes down with the rebound, and he's fouled after that. I think one thing about tonight's game, OEB is really going to have a tough time um, with their guards, especially on defense. Uh, OC's guards are so quick and, and have much more size and are better shooters. It's going to be difficult to, to guard them. The Chiefs are a very physical ball club, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, they take their first lead of the ball game, 5-4, to four, Oklahoma City. Brad Thompson with the ball, trying to work the ball inside. Don Newton for three, won't go, off the back of the rim. Brian Hopgood with the rebound, over to Corey Jenkins. Corey Jenkins trying to get it over to Brian DeBose, won't go. Sprints to the right one now with great defense there. Boy, yeah, that's true. Bison defense has really picked up uh, since earlier games. They've really become, become more intense and more aggressive in what they've done. That's Corey Jenkins with the ball, top of the key. Bison playing a man-to-man -man here, Bob. What do you think about that? How do we match up? Well, their size is definitely very competitive. Their size, they just got two big men that are really powerful inside. It's going to be difficult uh, for Lamont and Eric to, to guard uh, to guard Hopgood. Hopgood might have got away with the walk there. Anyhow, the basket counts. Spencer the right one now in the lane. He's fouled by number 15, Ryan Adodal. I think I'm really surprised at OCU's defense. They're really being really aggressive, and, and things that they've done just really surprised me. I, it's it, it's going to be tough to to beat them tonight. The ball out. Don Newton over to Eric Jones to Lamont Ford. Brad Thompson top of the key. Looking down inside. Nothing happening. Brad to the inside with the big man in there with the trees. Brad loses the ball. Hopgood steps out of bounds. It's going to be Bison basketball. Out of bounds on the baseline. Brad Thompson going in with the trees. What do you think about that, Bob? Well, I think Brad definitely is a good player. He thinks the game very well more than anybody else on the court. Eric Jones for three. It's good. <laughs> I think Brad is one of the one of the best players. One of the one of the best players thinking wise in the game. A hustler, a good player. Ryan Adoto with the ball inside to Brian Hopgood. Brad Thompson literally clobbered there. Going to be charged with the foul. Calls a block. That's Brad's first. Check that. That's Brad Thompson's second foul. The senior guard in trouble early on. Chief ball. Brian DeBose with the ball. Corey Jenkins. Corey Jenkins to Ryan Adodal. Uh, you know, Kerry, I think rebounding is going to be a very big factor in this game. Lamont Ford misses the slam. Brian Hopgood with the foul. A big foul there. Get the big man in trouble, and we might have a chance here. Yeah, like I was saying, you know, rebounding is definitely a factor. If if we can keep keep them off the boards as much as uh, as much as getting rebounds ourselves with the Bison, then I think we'll we'll definitely do well. It's gonna be, it's gonna be that with a combination of a good defense and good and offensive strategy that's gonna. Gonna make the difference. Lamont Ford hits the first of two there. The Bison up eight to seven, 16 35 left in the first half. Lamont Ford averaging 70.2% from one. Ryan Adoto for three. It's good. Basket Chiefs, the Chiefs back up on top, 10 to 9. Steal by Ryan Adoto. Over to Corey Jenkins to Brian Hobgood. Gonna be a charge on Brian Hobgood. Brad Thompson and Brian Hobgood getting tangled up there in the paint. Hobgood's gonna check out. That's number 34. Tandy Wilbur checks in. 
Well, I'll say one thing, Kerry. Tensions definitely are high. You can already see the, the irritation in OB players' faces. OCU's big men, Hopgood, has a couple of fouls, and I believe DeBose, that's his third foul. That's Brian DeBose's third foul, and he's having a seat here as Tammy Wilbur checks in. Going to be a charge called on number 10, Walsh Jordan. It's going to be Bison basketball out. The Bison looking good. It's 12 to 10. OBU on top. Bison ball, 15 minutes and 49 seconds to play in the ball game. Eric Jones will inbounds the ball to Brad Thompson. Capacity crowd out tonight. As always, Oklahoma City University in town playing the Bison. Oklahoma City ranked number one. If you're just now checking in with us, it's going to be a great ball game. Saddle up your horses and sit back and enjoy the ride because it's going to be a fun one. Okay. Going to be a foul inside. Spencer the right one now. Step to the line for two. Spencer the right one now. Step to the line to shoot two. Spencer shooting 73.3% from the free throw stripe so far this year. Hits the first of two. We'll see what he can do with the second one. Bobby Funk and Kerry Hilliard here along with Gene Butler. Bobby Funk, the color man tonight. Gene, the statistician to the left. And this is Kerry Hilliard speaking play-by-play. -play. OBU 14, OCU 10. It's going to be a really big problem for us for OBU carry is that we just we can't guard uh, OCU's guards. They're they're very tough. They're very quick and they shoot very well. Very quick, very athletic ball club. That's going to be a foul on number 22, Corey Jenkins. That's his second foul. I think OBU is doing very well. They're they're being very patient getting a lot of fouls, which is very good, especially for OC against OCU. It's, it's one thing that can help us out. If we can get most of their, their main people into, into foul trouble, then OBU will do okay. Eric Jones steps to the line, shooting 59.6% from the charity stripe this year. Uh, not exactly Jones's best part of his game, but nonetheless, he's gonna hit the first of two and miss the second one. Corey, uh, Lamont Ford with the rebound. Puts that one back up, it won't go. Eric Jones, a package player, uh, works on those free throws, he's gonna be great. I think uh, you're definitely right, Eric is a package player, he's very well. Only weakness in his game maybe is, maybe is uh, ball handling ability. But I, th but I think other than that, he does very well, especially in the league that he's in. Lamont Ford up top inside to Eric Jones, gonna be a slam there. Eric Jones slams it home. The Bison up 17 to 15. 14 minutes and 40 seconds left to play in the first half. A spirited game thus far, Bob. Yeah, the crowd is definitely going to be a factor. You know, OBU-OCU is a big rivalry. Always has been. The, the crowd definitely gets into it, and it definitely gives the players uh, more, I would say, gumption to get it going. That's Brian Hopgood inside with a little left shoulder duck in with a right hook. That's one of his patented moves right there. Yes, that's very true. I think that's definitely one of, one of the toughest things that OBU is going to have to worry about is that hook. It's one thing that Coach, I know, has, has told them to really watch out for and, and try to eliminate that from his game. Number 21, Corey Harbert checks into the game for the Bison as Don Newton takes his seat. Boy, Corey's really turned out to be a really good, really good star for OBU. He's done very well in three-point shooting. I think he'll, he'll be a really good player in the future. Corey Harbert shooting 39.6% from the three-point line. Big man from outside. Brian Hopgood inside. Lamont Ford slaps it down. Corey Harbert with the basketball, pulling it up court. Eric Jones off the give and go. Going to be called for a travel there. It's going to be OCU basketball. As you can tell, there's a lot of people here. Capacity crowd, exciting crowd, enthusiastic crowd. We can barely hear ourselves as we speak, so. Yeah, the crowd really is, it's really impressive to be, uh, to be up here. I've never been uh, involved in something like this. I've always been the one on the court. 
Bob Funk, a member of the OBU basketball team, red shirt this year. Last year, a true freshman, made, made the team, played with the Bison last year. Next year, you'll be back up here with us tonight to lend your expertise in uh, color commentating. Oh, thank you, Kara. I appreciate that. As I he mentioned, know, if I don't know if expertise is the right <laughs> word. Well, I think that you're an expert. That's all that matters, right? Well, thanks. Bob Funk's first time to do this, sophomore this year at Oklahoma Baptist University. Big game here, big game for you to step up and take the color. <laughs> Thanks. It's, it's really, I really enjoy the job. It's a lot more fun. Brian Hotgood uh, with a turnaround jump there. I think it's definitely going to be something we really got to take away from Hopgood. He's definitely, he definitely does not like to pass it out when he's in the post. It's something he really doesn't like to do. You're going to have to take away a shot sooner or later. Well, you mentioned that he likes to shoot the ball when he gets it down low, and why not? He's that close. What are the odds that he's going to miss? That's the truth. He's, he's very good at what he does. He's most likely not going to miss. That's Hopgood, the big man with the rebound. Corey Jenkins bringing the ball up for the Chiefs. Wilbur Marsh with the ball. Over to Hopgood. Lamont Ford with the rebound at the Brad Thompson. Ball stolen by Corey Jenkins. That was Elijah Maxey with the ball. Couldn't get it to go. Eric Jones for three, won't go. Spencer Wright tried to put it back up, couldn't get it to go all either. I, th I think that's a rebounding right there is a key. You need the, those offensive rebounds do make a lot of difference, especially when it comes to the final, final minutes of the game, those buckets that you could have had. Oklahoma City University takes its first time out, the first time out on the floor. The score, OCU 21, OBU 17, 11 minutes and 51 seconds to play in the ball game. A spirited contest, a great battle thus far. And I'm, I'm sure it'll be a great battle, well over 100 points tonight. Yeah, most definitely. Both teams are very spirited and, and very competitive, I think, most likely. It's going to be one of the most competitive games you'll see this season. Transition teams, both teams like to get the ball up court, run with the basketball. OBU especially likes to do this. Coach Wincase said earlier today that the key to the important factors in beating the Bison tonight are to take Eric Jones out of the ball game, something they haven't really done thus far, and also to take the transitional game away from the Bison. How are they going to do that, Bob? Well, I think definitely take away the defensive transition. Uh, OBU's always has been good about getting back very quick on the court. It's very hard if they can push, if OCU can push the ball up fast enough, and they'll take that that aspect of OBU's game away and score easy buckets. You know, the one who scores the most easy buckets is most likely the one who's going to win the game. Exactly. Number 24, Quinn Rooldridge checks into the ball game for the Bison. Number 30, Lance Johnston does also. So on the floor for the Bison, we've got Thompson, Wooldridge, Johnston, Harbert, and Eric Jones. <laughs> OCU has six men on the court, so they're going to be charged with a technical foul. Oh, I don't know what that says about OCU. Brad Thompson called that. Brad Thompson was the one who saw the six men on the court. Nobody else really even noticed it. I guess OCU is good enough. You really don't need to give them an extra man. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're right, Gary. One thing about it, Quinn Rorich, you know, he's stepping up to the line. He's really been a, someone who's a surprise, been a surprise for OBU coming in as a freshman and having done so well. Quinn Against Rolders. Waylon Baptist, he had, he had five threes in a row, which is really outstanding for a freshman. Quinn Rulder is shooting 84.4% from the line. Hits the first and the second. Quinn always has been a good free throw shooter. In high school, he shot 90% uh, his junior and senior years. Bison ball out after the uh, technical foul on the free throws. The score is 19. The Oklahoma Baptist University 19, OCU 21. Bison are behind two, 11 minutes and 48 seconds to play in the ball game. Hopefully you'll stay tuned with us here at the Bison Sports Network. A great ball game, it's already been great, but it's gonna be even better, I gotta feel it. Number one ranked Oklahoma City University versus number, number eight ranked OBU. NAIA basketball at its best. Lance Johnson for three, won't go. Corey Harbert almost with the tip in. Couldn't get it to go. Corey Jenkins with the basketball. There's going to be a walk on number 45 for OCU. That was Elijah Maxey with the walk there. It's going to be Bison ball out. 
If you haven't been with us, Brian DeBose has three fouls. He's checked out on the ball game. Brian Hobgood has stepped it up and taken his place, so he's really been on fire thus far in the first half. I think Hopkins done a very good job. Uh, he's been able to stay out of foul trouble, which is an important key for OCU. I think that was one of the main points OBU was worried about was trying to get him into foul trouble to get him out of the game. Corey Harbert couldn't get the three to go. Corey Jenkins with the basketball up top. Well, I'm really impressed with OBU's defense. They've really stepped it up a whole lot. Bison playing a man-to-man -man versus a more physical and I I don't know if they're more athletic, but they're definitely a tough ball club to play man-to-man -man on. Oh, that's the truth. Well, they're so intense. Coach Hoffman does such a good job in teaching intensity of defense and how important it is to win basketball games. Number 44, Ian Phillips has checked into the ball game for uh, the Chiefs. His presence has already been seen. Corey Harbert for three. That basket won't go. Eric Jones gets the rebound to Lance Johnson. Ball out, it's going to be Chiefs basketball. Spins with the right one now, checks in the ball game. Corey Harvard will have a seat. Corey Jenkins with the basketball for the Chiefs. Let's see how the Bison doing their defense here. I think. Their, their intensity is, is great. It's it's doing a lot for them. It's kept the, kept the OCU at bay. That's Ian Phillips with the ball over to Wilbur Marsh. <laughs> Tandy Wilbur with the basket. Brad Thompson up top over to Eric Jones. Eric Jones working the ball inside, loses the handle. I think Still you definitely saw one of Eric's right. weaknesses there was has his ball handling skills. Spencer with the right one now, takes it inside, misses the shot. Lance Johnson with the rebound, out to Brad Thompson. To Wildridge for three. It's good. Quinn definitely has become more of a star and more of a, more of a potential threat from the three-point line in the last uh, four or five games. He's, he's sort of the maverick of the team, but he, he plays very well. OCU 26, OBU 22, if you just checked in here at the Bison Sports Network. Great ball game, but you can't come down to the Noble Complex at Oklahoma Baptist University. Definitely stay here on Channel 30. Nine minutes and, and 28 seconds to play in the first half. The Bison down by six. I think definitely OBU is going to have to take away take away the, the drive from OCU. They've, they've had a bit of a problem with it. A lot of OCU's uh, shots have been easy layups right through the middle. They're really going to have to step up that defense a lot more than they have been. Wildridge for three. Another Bison back in his box. Just an outstanding player at times. Corey Jenkins with the basketball. <laughs> that was Elijah Maxey for three. What? Brad Thompson with the basketball. Bison ball. Trailing by five, eight and a half minutes to play. Eric Jones for two. You can't stop him. You can only hope to contain him. <laughs> That's right, Gary. He's That's very strong inside. He's, he's, a, he's a great inside player as well as outside. He shoots very well. Coach Wynn Case himself said you can't stop Eric Jones, but we're going to try to contain him and control him tonight. This is true. I don't think you can stop him, but it's a pretty difficult job to contain him too. Yeah. We've seen that so far. Eric Jones lighting it up thus far in the ball game. Lance Johnson for three. Couldn't get that one to go. Lance is sort of surprising tonight. He had been before, he stepped it up as, as this is being his senior year. He's really stepped it up and, and, and been a good player. Thompson for 10, Ryan Thompson, that's his third, team third. Give the game for the here you see Eric Jones, that power move, just using his whole body. Just He uses his body really well to shield the ball and take it into the hoop. That was Eric Jones' seventh point thus far in the ball game. Eight minutes to play. The Bison trailing by three. It's OCU 30, Oklahoma Baptist University 27. That was number 10, Walsh Jordan, with the first of two free throws. The foul on Brad Thompson. Walsh shooting two. Hits, hits the rim, won't go. Second shot was no good. 
Going to be another foul call going for the rebound. Lance Johnson, number 30. There again, you see how rebounding is a key in this game, you know. And they really need to concentrate on that. It's something that's going to help them later in the game. Those, all those, those extra buckets really count up. Two important key factors in this ball game. Uh, the Bison must rebound and must get out in transition. I don't think that necessarily the Bison can outrun OCU, but I think by execution is, is the key to this game offensively for OBU. Spins with the right one now, loses the handle. Number 45, Elijah Maxey couldn't get that one to go. Land. Lamont Ford with the rebound over to Spencer, the right one now inside. It's going to be a foul. That was Elijah Maxey with the foul. Boy, that's almost all you really have to do to keep from Spencer Rice going to the bucket and just fouling. Like, the players all call him Silk because his moves are so smooth. He's just a great finesse player. At any rate, Spencer Rice steps to the line. He'll be shooting one and one here. I don't know what that mix-up was on the court, but anyway, Spencer shoots his first one. Spencer Wright shooting 73.3% from the free throw line. Front end of the one and one won't go. Well, the Bison have really had a hard time with their free throws this year. It hadn't been, the percentage hasn't been that great. Something they really needed to work on. Overall team percentage for the Bison uh, is 68.9%. That was a big dunk by Ian Phillip. And a foul on the shot. That's Lamont Ford's first foul. Yeah, there you see an example of OCU's power inside, I think. It's uh, really, it's really, it's, I don't think OBU's gonna let it intimidate him though. Ian Phillip at the line, hits his, second, hits his uh, free throw and makes that a three point play. Spencer to the right one now with the basketball. Don Newton checked back into the ball game a minute ago. Looking inside, nothing doing. Eric Jones up top of the key. Well, they're not, they're not really helping off of Don Newton. He's, he's such a good three-point shooter. They can't really afford to let him shoot from outside. Spencer Wright, number 12, with the basket inside the paint. There again, you see an example of Spencer's smoothness inside and the finesse that he uses just to take the ball to the hole. He's such a great finisher. Makes it look so easy. Coach Hoffman always has been known for his his fire on the court. You know, he never he never is one to back down though. Sometimes it seems like he takes leisurely walks down the court. <laughs> That's right, Gary. At any rate, some kind of mix-up down there between the referee and Hoffman. Lamont Ford going to be charged with the foul. That was Ian Phillips inside. Right there, I think you see something that commonly happens and necessarily, you know, maybe not be Lamont's fault to just tie up down, down low. I know I've, I've played in the post, and it gets really rough down there. And sometimes it may not be your fault. You may get tied up. It's just one of those things that happens. It looked like Ian got him with a head fake, and Lamont was in the air and just kind of came down on him. That's number 23, Aaron Howe. Can't get the shot to go. Chiefs getting all kinds of rebounds here. Yeah, that's like I said, it's going to be an important key. OB is really going to have to learn to block out. Elijah Maxey with the three. The Bison trailing now by eight. 37-29, the Chiefs have the lead. Six minutes to play in the first half. Spencer with the right one now, looking inside to Eric Jones. Eric Jones, the man. There's Eric displaying his power again. He's such a, he's such a good player inside, so quick. That's all, all he can do is foul him, just to keep him, keep him from going to the hole. It's going to be a foul on Aaron Howell, number 23, his first. Eric Jones steps to the line, shooting one and one. Eric hits the first of two. Eric now with nine points in the first half. That's another fa factor of Eric's game that I'm really impressed by is his free throw percentage. He always, he seems to always come through in, the, in those clutch, in those clutch times when he needs the free throw points. Yeah, his overall free throw percentage is kind of low, but he always does come through in the clutch. Don Newton loses the handle over to Eric Jones. 
having problems holding on to the ball. For three, Eric Jones. I think maybe that little, that little mishap with the ball kind of set him off. 